Hey people, it's Vlad. Today I'll show you one of my favorite games from my happy childhood. GTA 2, made by Rockstar Games, trademark, copyright. Developers took the best from the first game and multiplied it. Welcome to GTA 2. Story of the game takes place in the future, in a year 2013. It was a great year, if I'm not mistaken. At the moment when the game was released, 2013 was something so distant and futuristic. Well, we are living in 2020 right now, and the future is here. The first thing that caught my eye, there are no women. So in the trailer we can see two females looking like individuals, and on the radio we can hear female voices. Don't let yourself get into a trap, because we are all nowhere else. The game takes place in a town called Anywhere City. Typical modern city with their own laws, entertainment, problems and infrastructure. The Anywhere City is filled with pollution, criminals and suicides. You are a small croc who has contended for the Sexiest Man Award of 2008. Decide to go all in and become a criminal mastermind. Because you don't even have money to buy an ice cream or a hot sausage. And in Anywhere City, even a homeless person has the opportunity to earn sweet bundles of money. If you know where to look for a job. The Anywhere City is divided into three districts, each with its own structure and gangs. First district is downtown. The name of the district is not accidental, because there are a whole area near a mental institute drove by mad bandits, loonies, wearing a doctor's outfit. Their jobs include, but not limited to, blowing up a pizza van, because their gang leader Elmo got tricked into getting Domino's pizza tattoo for a hundred year free pizza delivery, and killing taxi drivers and ruining their cars, because Elmo is not satisfied by just giving his driver a two-star rating in his taxi app. And also blowing up Yakuza's hentai center. Second gang in this district is Yakuza. Yakuza is running the drug business and making underground hentai magazines. On Yakuza missions you will write a guru art director to his office and also cooperate with their men the ancient torture master. To lay vengeance upon a traitor from Tokyo who accidentally formatted Oyabon's hard drive and erased 234 gigabytes of traps. The third gang is Zaibatsu Corporation, which has no in-game connection to Japan. Zaibatsu wants to control every district and eventually the whole town and eradicate every other gang. They have occupied every district in the game. Their presence makes you think that there is a connection between the game and real life. In the downtown district, Saibatsu will offer you a job of crushing a car with a man inside, killing Looney's group and destroying several Yakuza cars, carrying GeForce video cards to their Bitcoin mining factory. Second district is the residential district, which includes a trailer park and a prison. Second district is my favorite area in the game. I can't be sure 100%, but I think that the game areas were created under the influence of psychoactive drugs. If the first district was made under a low dose of drugs, the second was made under a fucking ton of MDMA, multiplied by crack and adrenochrome. In the second district you will find, besides Zaibatsu, rednecks and scientists. Rednecks are fans of bootleg alcohol, explosives and Elvis Presley. Redneck jobs in the second district are interesting and among the hardest. This includes stealing a tank from a local army base and going undercover in a prison to provoke a bloody riot. Getting a payback for a very funny story in a shower. 
involving the main boss, Billy Bob Bean, in some soapy adventure with 11 other men. And also do blowjobs, because if there is a wall with no hole, you cannot get your glory. Scientists, which is also called SRS, which stands for Sex and Reproductive Systems, specialized on cloning people and reducing the populations of their rivals. They want you to kidnap a grandpa, a hero of all rednecks, to examine his prostate. And to blow up the Zaibatsu's hydroelectric station because the Zaibatsu hired men destroyed scientists' precious sun batteries. In the second district, Zaibatsu will offer you a mission to bridge a police department and a job where you replace a fire truck's water cannon so it would be more effective against human beings, solving heat problems for every rednecks. The third and final district is the industrial district. I think I have already seen all this. You can see a lot of factories here, crazy Ivans armed with shotguns and pistols. Just like in the place where I live. Additionally, there are Krishna guys who want peace and love. And if you don't, they will fucking incinerate you. And of course, Zaibatsu. Russians' primary objective is supplying themselves with vodka and mincing pedestrians into a high-protein product, which will later be distributed in a local fast food restaurant called Gordon Ramsay. Russian local boss bears a very familiar surname, Jerkov. But believe me, I and he share no connection. We are just Russians, what can I do? Also, there are more ruthless and hard jobs given out by Russians, such as preventing free tanks from arriving to the Jerkov's manor. Because a local Zaibatsu boss lost several millions while playing poker drunk. Krishna can also offer some hardcore job that will force you to drink alcohol and crush your keyboard, just as I did. For example, at one mission you have to rescue a group of praying people, which is held at a Zaibatsu base, and those peaceful people are guarded by three tanks, and Zaibatsu don't want to let them keep worshipping our god. Zaibatsu gang in the last district will offer you a job to steal a tank, twice. Actually, these two missions are the easiest in the third area, if you know what to do. Gameplay To complete any district, you have to earn a certain amount of money. To leave the first district you need 1 million, to leave second 3 millions and 5 millions for the last one. And the game doesn't give a fuck how you are going to accomplish this goal. You can earn money as a taxi driver, recycling cars for scrap metal, killing people for 20 points each, crashing into other cars because you are so fucking bad at driving, the game is showing mercy. Or doing jobs for district gangs, which includes everything above. To get from point A to point B, you may use your feet, trains and vehicles. Because after all, we are playing an arcade game with cars. For effective arguing with others, we can use fists, 100% useless because you cannot harm anybody with them except yourself. Pistol, powerful but unreliable. Dual pistol, same as pistol just using both hands and both eyes. Machine gun and its silenced version, the main weapon in the game, which you will use most of the time and because of the auto-aim mechanic, in a game it is easy to use. Unfortunately, if your enemies are armed with machine guns, you are fucked. Shotgun – great weapon that helps you to lose a mission. Grenades – a great throwing weapon that helps you to lose a mission. Molotov cocktails – the one and only weapon for fast tank takedowns. Rocket launcher stands for its name. You can launch rockets and also launch yourself to the moon if you use this tool improperly. Flamethrower – one of the best weapon in the game against humans. Thanks, Elon. The moment you ignite someone, he starts to run and scream in agony. 
he won't attack you and will eventually burn to a crisp. The same goes for you, the only way to extinguish your ass is to hop into a car. How does it work? I don't know, I'm a regular user, I just plug and play. Electro gun, futuristic blaster that shoots lightning and devastates all targets in the area. My opinion, it's cool, like a golden grills or a pumped up wheelchair, I'm advising you to use an Uzi or a flamethrower. Using weapons will attract the attention of various law enforcement agencies. If you've burned 10 people, you will be chased by cops that would want to have a conversation with you in their car. If you manage to burn them too, you will be chased by even more salty meat in blue uniform who would want to talk to you. If you made it to the fourth wanted level, you will meet SWAT guys who don't want to talk to you, they just want you dead. Unfortunately for them, they are armed with shitty pistols, so you can easily get rid of them. After wasting SWAT guys, the FBI agents come into play. The cool looking guys, heavy armored and armed with shotguns and machine guns. When I was young and struggled at 2nd district, I thought that at the 5th wanted level the game is over, because the FBI are really tough to kill. I was wrong, because there is a 6th and final wanted level which brings an army to put you down. And at this moment the game can really be over in a few seconds if you don't manage to drop your wanted level. Regular pedestrians are removed from streets and replaced with men in camouflage with machine guns. There are also tanks on the roads which auto aim you off screen. It's wonderful. Also you may find some bonuses laying around. Some of them not that great, like invincibility, which is placed so far away it ends before you manage to start your fight. Some of them are useful, like armor and health that can be found near any mission booths. And some of them are game breaking, such as life bonus and score multiplier bonus that can be found in the second district. If you stack your multiplier bonus, you can earn millions just by completing one job. The score multiplier increase is also granted by passing a mission, and you lose half of your multipliers by getting busted by cops. You don't want to lose this precious red number. The whole point of a game is to complete missions and to raise your score multiplier. For example, you cook a person and get 20 points. With multiplier level 7, you get 7 times more points. Do the math, boy. The bonus I cannot fully understand is Electro Fingers. You get a device that lets you attack other people with electricity if you are close enough to them. Also, on each level you may find Kill Frenzy. It's a mini game where you have to kill people or destroy cars with a limited amount of time. For passing each one you will get bonus life, and for failing you will be granted an additional wanted level. Same as regular missions, there are hard and easy kill frenzies, if you know what you are doing. Anyway, you can earn a certain score just by raising your multiplier to level 5 and higher and just stealing a tank and ending district by blowing cars. But this is not what you came for. Right? So, I will share with you my personal experience about completing gang missions in all districts. I'll talk about the most interesting and traumatizing. Why even bother yourself with missions? Well, because you get fat stacks of cash and a multiplier, so you can earn even more on next jobs. You can spend your money on some practical stuff like changing color of your car and losing wanted level or saving your game at a local church. Just pay 50 grand to a local priest and he will praise you and if you don't, you will be excommunicated. Working for one gang will inevitably lead to losing respect with other gangs. If in the first district, even at the lowest gang reputation, your gameplay doesn't change much. In the second and third districts, better not to decrease gang reputation. If you don't know what you are doing. I can recall only one mission from the first district where I failed hard. 
but it's only because I was too drunk and couldn't aim well. There are also some funny moments I want to show you, like in one mission I got attacked by a Yakuza kamikaze, who mistakenly equipped a rocket launcher instead of his ancient sword and blew himself into oblivion. Even though there are some hard missions in the first district, you still can complete all 21 missions with no problem, because it's the first district, it's more like a tutorial before actual game. The problems begin in the second district, uh, because first of all, every gang is now armed with different weapons depending on your reputation level. With negative rep you will encounter some hard fights. For example, all scientists would be armed with flamethrowers, rednecks use their bootleg alcohol not just for drinking, but to blow you and your car up and reduce your quality of life. And Zaibatsu start using machine guns to deliver their hot loads straight to your face. Also, all missions in the second district are really hard and challenging. For example, there is a mission where a redneck boss asks you to steal a tank from an army base. It's not that hard by itself. The hard part is to dodge all tank barricades encounters, which would end your mission instantly. So, I came to an idea. I'm going to use the pain spray service and lose all vented levels this way. This will allow me to easily complete the mission with no problems. I made all preparations, parked the car, triggered the wanted level and drove through a paint spray garage. I made all preparations, again drove through paint spray service, lost wanted level, got into a tank and the game sent me a big fuck you. Thank you, Rockstar. So, finally I just gave up with tricks and decided to move straight forward and suddenly it worked. Another redneck's job is about getting into a prison. Oh boy, was it hard. First of all, you need to get captured by cops and even this can be a challenge. After you get into a prison, you have to start a riot by killing guards. And the madness begins. Everyone wants everybody dead and they don't like the blue uniform you are wearing. You will die from 3 to 4 punches from local beefed up prisoners who like to do their exercises after a healthy meal. After you kill all 8 guards, you have to escape by performing a jackass style stunt jump and then drive into a redneck base, which can also be quite difficult. The other job which enraged me was the red scientist job. Your task is to blow up Saibatsu power station and for this tough job you get assistance. Four heavily armed scientists armed with their bachelor degrees. Unfortunately, in this cruel world, nobody appreciates educated men, so you are on your own. You need to destroy four turbines. And man, I wasted so much time here. The problem was the guards, which shoot you off screen and drain your armor and health. I even tried to restock health and armor to no avail. Finally, I managed to complete the first part of this quest, but now. I had to travel to the second part of the station through aggressive groups of masochists with machine guns. I thought the game was over. Turns out everything was cool and I just had discovered a speedrun solution. There are also fun mini games with collecting secret sports cars for a secret society known as wankers. The cars are hidden in obscure and almost unreachable places, but after you collect all of them you are awarded with a high money bonus and access to some cool transport, such as tanks, fire trucks with flame cannon and more. Unfortunately, the multiplier and life bonuses are only present in the second district, same goes to these cars. In the third and final district, you will be working for Russians, Krishna fanatics and Zaibatsu. The third level is really tough. First of all, you need 5 millions to complete it, Secondly, you will be facing a national army in this region. And last but not least, the whole level is a fucking maze made of factories and dead ends. Multiplier and life bonuses gone and you'd better not to piss off Zaibatsu because they are armed with rocket launchers at minimum reputation level. Each gang will offer a lot of hard missions, 
But surprisingly, the two red missions from Zaibatsu are super easy. If you know what to do. All you have to do is make the right preparations for the mission, such as placing the car for respraying and losing the wanted level. Easy peasy. The other one is just stealing a tank from an army base. Sounds familiar, right? Well, actually, this mission can be completed on the first try. Just find your way through the army men and avoid white roads. That's it. The really hard jobs are granted by Krishna and Russians. Their jobs also include tanks and tears. There is a Russian job where you have to bring communism and Marxism ideology to Krishna right in their holy temple. This job is tricky because you need to survive for two minutes against peaceful acolytes armed with Elon Musk flamethrowers and you are done on hit. Well, I figured out how to pass this mission super easy. Just find a quiet place in their temple, smoke up and pray. Then kill your fellow comrade and run away from the temple since nobody in the temple will be armed with flamethrowers anymore. After you complete the last district, you get a beautiful end screen. Wow, never seen this before actually. That's great. By the way, after completing each district, you unlock a bonus level. And the best one in my opinion is the ice cream devastation level after the first district. Where you have to chase around ice cream vans and blow the cream out. In conclusion, GTA 2 is a great game and it can easily occupy you for a dozen of hours. The sound effects and in-game radio are top-notch. There is also a multiplayer mode, which I can't show you since I have no one to play with, but if you manage to gather a group, you should definitely try it out. I rate this game 12 ice cream vans out of 4 rockets because fuck those tank barricades. A special thanks to my fellow comrade Dmitri. Without him, there will be no me. More content to come. I have really big plans, so stay tuned.